the day is finally here. Yes. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Just looking out, seeing this day finally happen, just nothing brings me a greater joy. Seeing everyone here, meeting people. This is a time that we've all been waiting for. For the last two years, we have been continually moving a direction, but yet to be to make it real, to make it come into the fruition of now this is now becoming something that cannot be ignored. This is something that the media, that the world watching us, well, they can mock, they can laugh, but we can also relate because we did as well at first. Most people can relate to the fact that we laughed. We thought that the subject matter that it's gonna be carried on here over the next two days. Are you kidding me? Really? But what happens if someone starts to just look into it? Go look into it, just for a day or two. Nothing to hurt, right? Nothing really good on TV. Well, let's check it out. Most of us, if anything, we said, we're gonna take this down. I'm gonna prove this wrong, it should be easy. But it's not, why? Why isn't it easy? Why is it that the science community and as I call it, scientism. Because again, all of us, and I can't speak for everyone, but I would, I would almost say that we have no problem with true science. <laughs> to be able to test, to observe, to repeat, the scientific method. Science is great. But how much science are we seeing today? How much science is on mainstream television? How much science is on the talk shows? When it comes to certain issues, why won't they come to the table and debate? You think we're crazy? Why don't you do everyone a favor? Have a civilized debate, we welcome it. When, when's a good time for you? Your place, we'll make it easy. You name the time, we'll get on a plane, we'll meet up with you. You present your evidence, we'll present ours. Let everyone be a judge. But they say, the fact is, they say, the science is settled. The debate's over. Ask yourself the question, why don't they want to have that debate? Why do they just want to ridicule, drop mics, and say that's gravity? Sorry, but the last time I checked, dropping something is not scientific proof of anything. And just like a picture is not scientific proof of anything either, right? And when is it going to get to a point, I'm waiting for the day that they stop talking about the boats, boats going over the horizon. Is this the best we're dealing with? I was like telling my wife, I'm like, you know what? Maybe at some point they're going to bring up this whole new stuff and we're going to be like, whoa, we just that coming. I mean, it's been over two years and it's the same stuff. You know why? Because they have nothing else. Yeah. Today, 2017, what I find incredibly interesting about 2017, and this is not a religious thing. I want to make clear that we come from all different belief systems, backgrounds, sexes, races. It doesn't matter. You cannot put this in a box. But what I find fascinating is 2017 marks the 500 year anniversary of the Reformation. And if anyone doesn't understand or understand the Reformation, we talk sometimes about, you know, the slogan that I made for this day, for the conference, 500 years in the making. And you can look at it with Copernicus and all the things that were happening there. But what I find intriguing is that Martin Luther, 500 years ago to this year, said, you know what? Risking it all, risking even death, he went against the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic rule that was there, he said, no, we have issues. And it was risky. And there was persecution. There was people, it was, you were going to come under some serious fire. But understand this, that this 500 years in the making marks the new Reformation. It marks a Reformation going forward, becoming real. Because just like the 500 year anniversary of the Reformation with Martin Luther, it changed history. It not only split time going forward, but it affected millions of people. Right now, this day is about to affect millions of people. It will take many years. 
in my opinion, is not going to happen in two or three years. I could be wrong, and I'll be wonderful. People come up to me, dude, you were wrong. I'm like, I know I was wrong. This is great. Really, the people believe in it. But we have to be patient. We have to be patient with people. We have to understand that we were there at some points. Maybe it takes longer for certain people. But I just want to thank everyone for being here, supportive, the, the presenters, the speakers, all picked because it was important to me that people were here to represent the big picture. Sure, we have differences. We don't all agree with one another. I go so far as to say there's not one person that can 100% say this is the model. We don't know. We don't know 100%, but we're asking questions. And while we could be fixated on arguing about these things where they're not even 100%, but the one thing that we're 100% on is that we were being lied to. Yeah. Right? And while people are going to make so many different ways to look at this, all I'm saying is it's time to look at it of coming together and saying, look, we have our differences. We may not agree with one another. We can choose to get all wrapped on that. Or we can sit here and we can be here and we can grow saying, you know what? We all agree. We're not on a spinning ball flying through space. Two words, and there's no other two words that bring the reactions that these two words bring. And those two words put together are flat earth and I don't think anyone has seen the reactions that happen with two other words as crazy as those two words are from anger from joy oh, just the, the mix of emotions it's incredible it's incredible to see and you're like you think you just laugh it off people get angry people lose family members people lose friendships people there's a cost to this but the reward is going to be huge. It really is. And we're in a war. We're in the war. And it's on. It's for the truth. It's not going to be an easy road. I'm not going to sit here and say, we're, we're, just, we're heading forward. And it's just going to be rosy, no problem. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. There's no doubt about it. So if some people want to bail, bail. But there's going to be a lot of people that say, you know what? I want to see where this goes. And as we go through persecution, as we go through the hardest times of all our lives, it's going to refine us. It's going to mature us, not just as individuals, but as a community. And it's important. And today, this conference, what's happening here today is important because just like the scientific method being real, this is real. You cannot fake this. This is not green screen here, all right? I'm not green screen. Anyone who wants to debate that, we'll talk afterwards. I'd like to hear that. And in the same way it's not, in the same way, what I find fascinating is we come from all different beliefs. Myself as a Christian, I put on a conference as a Christian organizer, but I accept anyone to come here if they see the fact that there's a big picture going on. And while we can have our differences, hey man, we all agree on this. And this, there's nothing bigger than this. And I'd also like to talk to someone if you think there is a bigger lie than this, right? So again, seeing the big picture is important. We need to come together. I believe it's gonna be rough, but over time, the reward is going to be huge. And as we develop friendships, as we start networking, the one thing that we will have that a lot of people choose that not to associate, not to be part of this, is we'll have the realness. We'll have real people that have the same quest. They want to know the truth. They want to ask the questions. And this is important. It's important for every one of us. And I know all the presenters, including myself, we will be fair to say we don't 100% know certain things. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with asking the questions. And when we're not getting the answers, something's going on. This should be easy. This should have been a slam dunk. We shouldn't even be having this conference based on the fact of how ridiculous it is to most of the world looking in on this. They should have shut this down. They're not shutting it down, nor will they. This will continue to grow. This will get bigger. And hopefully more people will see the magnitude of this, the importance that we come together. And we honestly change the world, literally. And it's going to happen. So I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for coming. Honestly, couldn't even have done this without you. I want to thank the amazing staff here at Embassy Suites. They've been great, including Heather and Debbie, helping to organize and get things together. I want to thank my wife. She's been amazing. It's literally been me and my wife planning every aspect of this. 
And now that we get here, we've got incredible people like Rick Hummer, John Gabrielson, you know, coming in and really making it what I, like I envisioned, what I really wanted. And for some reason, I'm not sure, but I've been called to be a peacemaker, but also someone that brings people together. So if there's something you have hesitations, you want to know, I always say, at least get them on the phone and even better, talk to them face to face and then make your final judgment. But this idea of judgment calls based on the fact that you've never talked to people or you've never even met them. Let's be real people. You know, let's get to know people. Let's bond, let's grow as a community. So I'm excited. The next two days, plan every aspect. I have surprises, I have amazing things. I wanted this to be memorable as the first annual Flat Earth International Conference 2017. This is the beginning. This is not a one-off. There'll be more announcements soon, but again, you're part of history. Every one of you here, this is history. This will be put in the history books. Today, mark that date, because whether it's the next generation, the generation afterwards, they will remember this date, just like they remember, we remember Robotham or Carpenter, right? Even the, the people in the wilderness that were screaming out when no one, none of us were doing, whether it was Powerland or it was Dubai, but now it's come to a point here, and this has got to a point now where it's becoming real. People are taking notice, something is going on, and it is going on. And we're gonna to continue to go on this journey, and it's all gonna to come together, and it's gonna be exciting to be part of it with every one of you, and anyone that's not part of it, next year, come out. At least do it once before you reserve judgment. Again, we're not talking about any one model. We're not talking about any type of thing. We're just gonna focus on what's seriously wrong with the mainstream narrative and what we're being taught from an early age. So I want to leave with that. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank God. Without God, this wouldn't even happen. I want people to recognize that. Thank you. So whether you're at a point where you're looking at the, the creator, because the one thing you can say, there's no atheists in flat earth. And again, if there is, please talk to me afterwards. I'd really like to hear that. I haven't heard it yet. I'd like to kind of figure that all out. But the idea is we're all, wait a minute, we're unique. There's a creator. And maybe you're on a quest to find out who that true creator is and take your time, ask those questions, just like you did with science. Take your time, man. It's an important subject. But that's, that's the whole idea is we're all collectively here together. We understand it. We're going a, a common direction. And honestly, this has all been put together. I'm so grateful for the amazing people, you know, that helped coming together with this. And uh, it just, I want to say thank you to all the presenters and speakers. I've got to know every one of you. And honestly, I've watched for the last two years and I've seen no matter what's coming our way, you guys see the big picture. You understand certain things and you're willing to say, you know what, we're gonna put these things aside. Let's just see, let's give it a chance. And honestly, I, I, I treasure it. I'm grateful for it. Unfortunately, some people you know, didn't attend this year. It's okay. We're gonna move forward, but we'll find out what happens. But again, I'm the type that, you know what? I'm all about forgiveness. Just, you know, people, things happen in life and stuff like that. But again, I'm happy for the people that are here. And it's my great pleasure. Many people know um, this gentleman based on the work that he's done with Rod Skiba, whether he's on Lake Michigan or he's chasing balloons. Rick Hummer has done a lot of incredible things for me based on the fact of getting to know him in Texas when I was shooting Scientism Exposed 2 with uh, Rob and other ones and with Rick and become, you know, really close. He's helped me out a lot with the visual graphics and different elements. Um, and it's just my honor and pleasure to like announce him as RMC, Master of Ceremonies for the Flat Earth International Conference 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Back up. Back up. Oh, yeah. I just want to give me a hug, man. <laughs> That's the reality. This is real. Now everyone gets to see who we really are. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's, Thank you. that's as real as it gets. I don't know about you guys, but I, I, uh, I don't have my ears pop every morning when I wake up. So, wow. All I can say is, wow. Three years ago right now, if somebody said you'd be right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, what would you have said? No way. No way. What was your first reaction when you heard the term flat earth or read it? First of all, I'd like to uh, say I have a, uh, I have a love for everybody that's here, each and every one of you, and especially the speakers too. 
because the courage that it takes to come out and put your face on something and say, you guys, we've been lied to a lot. And the number one thing that most people say is, well, why would they do that? I don't know what you guys tell them. But I say, I think they're trying to hide God. They're trying to hide our creator. And getting paid to do it. Love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? So I'm not going to preach to you. But I'm going to say, I think it's a, an incredible journey that we're all on together. And it takes a very humbled heart to actually even start investigating this. And a humbled mind. Because the second that you find out what's really going on, the mashed potatoes seem to be going on up there. A little bit of gravy. And then when you really start looking into it, you realize that, man, stuff that we've been told is pretty corny. Now all we need is a turkey. And they give us Neil. So what I will say is this. As this couple days proceeds and goes on, I can't wait to meet more of you. Just already, just being here for the past couple days, I've realized, man, the individuals involved here and the, the smiling faces, it's really made me realize one thing. It's like being at summer camp right now. That's what my <laughs> wife said. She said, I haven't heard you this happy in a while. I said, well, it's, it's, it's nothing against you, babe. <laughs> but this has really set me free and set my mind free. And it's made me want to learn and grow. And on something like that, that can only be from God because I was the biggest class clown you'll ever meet. Trust me. As a matter of fact, I got paid to do it later on in life, doing radio and, and television stuff. So without further ado, I just want to say welcome. Thank you for being here, brother. By the way, Mark Sargent's the guy that kicked this off for me. And Rob Skiba is the one that said, have you looked into this? I got that phone call one day. We were working on Seed the Series. And he says, hey, man, have you seen any of this flat earth stuff going around on social media? And I went, yeah. I go, why? I go, is there something to it? <laughs> and Rob's on the other line. And I can actually, I didn't see his face, but we had talked enough on Skype and everything that I could actually see his face go, well, And I didn't laugh. And he can tell you, I didn't laugh. I went, are you serious? I said, yeah. I'm like, huh. I said, well, send me a link. Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent had a phone number at the end of his video. <laughs> and I thought, what in the world is this guy doing? This guy is absolutely out of his mind. After the first video, but I was intrigued. And a seed got planted. And then video two came on and the seed got watered. And by the time the third video hit, I'm leaving a message. You've got to call me, dude. What is going on? And he called back before video six. I think there were nine at the time. Yeah. And after talking to him, I realized this dude is crazy <laughs> but in a good way because he's taken on the foundation of our existence by indoctrination on social media and he's getting people's attention and even those that may be speaking this weekend or this week sorry feels like a saturday even those that may not believe the same things i believe i believe that the one who created them is using them anyway. But it takes a humbled heart. And it takes a humbled mind. And it takes strong faith. Without evidence. And we have faith. And we have evidence. So, without further ado. A guy that's been coming up on the scene here. That I've had the pleasure to know. Uh, just the last 48 hours. If that, but it's so funny that every single one of you that I've met, you do not feel like a stranger. And I think that's a common bond. And I think that's the commonality that there's something about these faces that I'm looking at. 
there's something about those minds and there's definitely something about the heart so stay humble as you speak to others robbie said it best i'm not going to drag this on i want to bring to the stage a guy that uh you've all seen him and i, and I think his his kickstarter was going onto a plane with a level And started recording. God bless him. Welcome to the stage, D Marvel, aka Daryl Marvel. here just take a few seconds to look around the room at your neighbors these may be uh, long-lasting friendships you will forge here you'll notice there's not a single tinfoil hat <laughs> all right that's my joke all right so <laughs> uh, and what you're gonna see uh, while you're here that we're all normal people that have an abnormal perspective on reality and um, we come from all different walks of life uh, different different situations, uh, different backgrounds. Um, a lot of us work normal jobs and just live regular lives like regular people, you know? And this, as I see it, is an opportunity to showcase for the world that we're normal people, just the same, you know? There's not gonna be any media spin on this one. You know, we get to speak directly to the camera and tell the world who we are. And that's an excellent opportunity for us. Um, so, just wanted to share with you my story again, as a few of you may have heard already. I'm a regular guy uh, from Arkansas, North Little Rock. Um, you know, wasn't very popular in high school. Didn't make the best grades, actually. Um, I slip into a British accent from time to time. You know, probably not. <laughs> something I work through. Think when I get nervous, you see see me do that from time to time. <laughs> I love that accent. Man. I don't know what you want me to do. But, um, you know, it, it, what, what I wanted to bring to the table as a YouTuber, Flat Earther, um, is just uh, just a connection with people, you know, just to show the, show the world that we're, we're just normal people. I, um, we have enough information uh, in this whole community situation. We have, uh, you know, guys that will give you complex mathematics they'll give you different experiments and all that um i'll i'll be the energy guy as it were I'll, I'll bring some emotion to this whole thing you want to put energy in motion that's how we get a movement and that's how i classify this this whole flat earth thing some say it's not a movement yeah it is in my opinion um so growing up not a whole lot of friends wasn't very popular i uh, did the uh, normal things that most people do, uh, got into athletics, all that, um, ran track for the last couple of years. I was in high school, got, got out and got into the military, uh, joined the army, uh, did basic training at Fort, um, where was that? Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and uh, AIT, Advanced Individual Training at um, Fort Lee, Virginia. I was a unit supply specialist uh, better known as a supply sergeant. Uh, while I was in, um, I was the guy that if you ran out of toilet paper, <laughs> I was the guy they sent to the supply store to put the order in, restock the shelves and get that stuff out there. I had to, you know, keep the books in line and all that. So, um, you know, no, no, no complex background that actually ties into this flat earth thing, you know, but did a year in, uh, in the desert went to Iraq for a year after 9-11 and that was actually where I uh, got into this whole conspiracy s situation uh, skipping ahead oh, I'm nervous. but it's all good um, 
0405, did a year in Iraq, and uh, at that point, I kind of overcame the idea of being afraid. Um, there's another story I just recently put out about how I overcame embarrassment. <laughs> May tell that story, but some people already kind of chuckled. You heard about that one. Um, what happened was the locals, they would put mortar tubes in the back of their uh, pickup trucks. They would back up to the gate, not the gate, the fence around the perimeter of the uh, military base that we were on. And in the middle of the night, they would come and fire the mortar rockets over over the fence. And just in the middle of the night, what we would have to do whenever that happened, whenever there was a mortar attack, we would have to put on all our gear, run to the nearest bunker and stay put for a half hour for accountability formation. Um, after about three nights of that at two in the morning, uh, you, you, you kind of, you know, first night, boom, 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 you hear the alarms going off, woo, and then you just get up, frantic, just putting all your stuff on, you take off. After a few nights of that, you kind of get used to it, and uh, I'm not going to lie, there was actually one time I kind of pretended to sleep through the drill. Um, it, it's, you can't stay on edge constantly, and that's, that's kind of something that, um, you'll you'll realize you know you can't always stay angry you can't always stay happy that's part of reality there's there's this separation you can't enjoy one thing without another thing uh coming into play uh that that's the duality of, of this existence uh you can't enjoy a sunny day without rainy days right so um there was that situation um got back I uh, got married. That didn't work out. Had a couple kids along the way. We'll zoom past that one. <laughs> um, so got out of the military, got a job uh, working as a logistics analyst. And, um, you know, after a while, uh, began dating a girl. And uh, we found ourselves living together. And uh, we shared a lot of things in common. And uh, one of those things was our, um, you know, just open-mindedness. That was one thing that uh, were, was a factor in us connecting so well that we were willing to explore other things outside of uh, what was real. So we began getting into what we call conspiracies, these alternative ideas of reality. And um, what happened, we, we, for about two years, got on YouTube, burned ourselves out. We, we looked over everything. 9-11 was where we started, and we just kind of worked our way from there. And we went from one thing to another to another, you know, Sandy Hook, 9-11, um, the, the false flags. We got into the Bilderberg, of Rothschilds, Illuminati, all, all, that, all that stuff. So all these general things that one ends up looking, onto, looking into when you – go on here because you look at one video and then another suggestion pops up by another guy or maybe along the same line. So that's kind of what happens there. And uh, so we got burned out and um, decided that we were going to take a breather for a little while, take a step back, uh, you know, step away from that. Because what happens when, when we look into these things, you'll come to a place where um, you start to get an outlook of the world that's kind of dark, takes you takes you to a kind of sad place. And you, uh, thank you for that nod there. I, I need the confirmation, man. <laughs> Crowd participation, I love it. All right, so you, you'll get to a part to where you, you start to feel like reality is just kind of scary, you know? Uh, like you, you'll find out that nothing ultimately is what it seems to be. And we had to, we had to step away from that. Um, my, I me mean, personally, I hit a serious low point, um, maybe a year and a half ago, full disclosure here, get ready. <laughs> so <laughs> I hit my low point, um, in, in this whole thing where everything was just terrifying. And, uh, I had to detach from reality for a while and it, it, it even affected the relationship. So for about six months, I had buried my head in this game, Marvel contest of champions. I was the leader of a uh, alliance named Conquerors of the Battle Realm. <laughs> My username was Digital Ninja X. It was it was awesome. 
My best player was Captain America. Anyway, <laughs> so, you know, I just kind of buried myself in that. I had to, I had to step away from all that, you know. You'll, you'll end up driving yourself insane if you, you know, get too, too deep into that. So it's important to come back, come back up for air and then maybe go back in after you've processed for a while. You know, we all have to take some time to uh, process our emotions uh, when we when we see these things. So if anything, I'd encourage you to, you know, look at one thing, look at another thing and then maybe step back, get, get as much information about that, process it in your reality, move on, then go on to something else. But you're going to do what you want to do anyway. That's just, just a suggestion from one friend to another. Um, so that that's where I was at. So uh, after that, we got involved in the uh, political aspect, still kind of playing around in the matrix. Um, you know, I, I wake up one day in 2016, I'm like, Donald Trump's running for president? <laughs> what? So, <laughs> so, so I start paying attention to these things, you know, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, so what's, what's going on? There's this Bernie guy, uh, Hillary, Hillary. No. Okay. So I'm from Arkansas. So I start to look into Hillary Clinton and realize, <laughs> dude, <laughs> What? The body count, right? You know? Dude. <laughs> it is not safe to be her friend, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we start looking at these things. I'm like, you know, I was nervous for a few months. I was like, you know, because all the media, they're like, yeah, Hillary's got it by a landslide. There's no way Trump It's like everybody was anti-Trump. And I kind of fell into that paradigm, even though I had done all this research, knowing that the political uh, theater was just that. It, it's all a, it's all an act. It's all a stage. We all know that these are actors just playing a role for everyone. So looked into that and um. After a while, it, it just started to worry me that it looked like she was going to win. So around the time where they actually started rolling the boats out November 2nd and was able to take a sigh of relief, seeing that Hillary didn't win because, man, where would we be if, if that happened? Anyway, um, moving along, uh, I felt a little better after that and stepped away from politics for a while and just kind of drifted with circumstance for a few months. Um, along the lines, we had already figured out Flat Earth. Um, what happened during that time where we detached ourselves uh, from the conspiracies, we had got onto Netflix and watched a TV series um, based on a Stephen King novel, I believe was named Under the Dome. And uh, we got through, got through that series. It, you know, first two, two seasons were all right. Third one, eh, you kind of lost me. It, it did. It, it was all bad candy. Seriously. Um, just got weird at the end. But anyway, um, what happens after you do a Netflix binge? You kind of have this emptiness in your heart. You know? You're like, you're like now what? You know? So, <laughs> so, to, so to continue feeding that, trying to fill that void, we, we get onto uh, YouTube and I, I type in Under the Dome. And uh, we're, we're looking for behind the scenes content. We saw some outtakes, blooper reels. That didn't really interest me. I was looking for more episodes, maybe. Yeah, right. Like it's going to be on YouTube, but not on Netflix. <laughs> what was I thinking? Anyway, <laughs> but, but one thumbnail that stuck out to me, it was a picture of Earth, seemingly, except it was flattened. And there was a dome over it. There was water spilling off the edges. There was out in space. Uh, and the title of it was Under the Dome. It was a two hour video. I click on that video and the first words I hear, this is a Reader's Digest version of the Flat Earth Theory and some of the more interesting topics. <laughs> that cool voice that I heard, that guy, <laughs> Mr. Mark Sargent. <laughs> and, and and like Rick said, this guy put his phone number at the end of that video. That, that was one of the things that stuck out the most to him. Like, okay, he's pretty transparent, you know. Um, he, he might actually want to talk to people about this, obviously. He put his email, put his phone number up. I'm like, all right, cool. But after that first video, after the first few minutes, uh, we had to pause it for a minute. Like, 
Did he just say flat earth? Because <laughs> I had never heard that in my adult life, you know? And we'll pause it in between each, each of the uh, flat earth clues and, uh, you know, ask each other questions. And we ended up watching that one time uh, Friday night and get something to eat, go to sleep, wake up. We watched that video all weekend. Back to back, like we'll watch it one more time. We're like, okay, I gotta, I gotta watch this again. She kind of got tired of it after a while. <laughs> just kind of left me at home for a few hours, um, just trying to digest. I'm like, because I had never heard of these things, but each thing started to make sense, that much more sense to me, and I was already primed to see this. I was, I was ready to receive the whole flat Earth idea because we had already come to the conclusion that we had been deceived about so many other things. So, of course, they would lie to us about this. I mean, why not? You know, they, they tell us that vaccines work. You know, uh, they, they tell us that milk's good for us. Um, you know, and a, a whole litany of other things. Litany, like I say that on a regular basis. <laughs> just, 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 just pulling stuff out of here. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> litany. Anyway, so so what happened? <laughs> just a regular guy, just talking, all right, just hanging out with friends. All right, so um, you know we were ready to see this thing, and uh, from there it, it was one more thing. I start looking into uh, ODD stuff, Jaron, Rob Skiba, um, you know, interviews by Patricia Steer, J just you know uh, the interview by Dave Murphy. I wish that guy was here. <laughs> That guy's awesome. I, we were back and forth on Twi uh, what was that? Skype this morning. Good guy. I love that guy. Um, so, you know, just going through the information and processing it. But uh, for a while, uh, I was a uh, classified closet flat earther. You know, it took me about four months before I actually talked to somebody outside of the apartment about this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and, and even then, and even then, I, I was in my car on the way to work. I like pulled down my uh, rearview wind mirror and looking, and I'm like, I think the Earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it takes a while, man. You know, because um, this this is a concept that goes contrary to to the mainstream narrative on the whole. So you got to be ready to be called crazy if you're going to say this out loud. So you know, I had to get comfortable saying it to myself, and then. Away I went, talking to people at work. And they told me to stop doing that after a while. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> okay. <laughs> got it, got it. They're like, no, dude, it's round. I'm like, you mean spherical. It, anyway. <laughs> don't even got the, don't even have the proper terminology for what they claim to believe, but at any rate, just move along. So that's the, Flat Earth Awakening in a in a nutshell. Just uh, moving along from that. Um, after that whole political thing, we had calmed down. I was still a flat earther, not as not as vocal as I used to be. But what happened? I um, still kind of ended up breaking the rules, so I still ended up talking to guys at work about it. Um, I, I'm a transportation tech, so I'm, I'm responsible for calling drivers in and out to uh, ship and receive uh, vehicles. Uh, for a, for a uh, contracting company. So I work with a download team and they're also responsible for getting the vehicles uploaded to get them shipped out. And they go on break every day at nine. So what I do, I kind of sneak out of the office at nine o'clock. I, I go to where they're taking a break and I'm like, all right guys, so here's, here's what I learned in this video I was watching last night. You know, so I, I'll talk to them a little bit each day and, uh, you know, met with resistance for the first, uh, few sessions. I was kind of like the flat earth teacher in the area. It was awesome. Um, but after a while, they started to ask questions and uh, became more receptive to the idea. So uh, out of the five, I was able to convert two. Uh, one was on the fence and the other two were still resistant. You're going to be all right, Jake. Anyway, <laughs> still love you, buddy, if you see this. Um, but um, it's all good. And Clint. Anyway, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the guy started to ask questions and uh, I got back to him after a while and there was uh, a meme 
a series of pictures that I saw matched together on Facebook that said, uh, these are things that won't work on a spherical Earth. It was, uh, I believe, a periscope, a sundial, a spirit level, and a compass, gyroscope. It might have been a gyroscope, too. It might have been five. <laughs> however, however it goes, um, didn't have a sundial handy. I had a compass, but I didn't know how I would use that to uh, conduct an experiment. But quickly, um, after I got off work and I talked to the guys, I was like, no, no, a level wouldn't work on a, on a globe Earth, Omar. You know, and um, he's like, well, well, what do you mean? Uh, so we, we went back and forth with that for a little while. And uh, after work, I went to my favorite department store, Lowe's. Yeah. <laughs> and I bought this. I bought this thing. And, uh, you know, I, I went back and uh, I said, OK, look, so what would happen since we're here in Tacoma, if this is level here, I couldn't really explain it all that well then. I'm like, if this is level here, the bubble stays in the center. We drive two hours away to Portland and it's still level there. That means it's flat, right? You know, but I thought about trying to do an experiment driving my van. I also live in a van, by the way. Um, <laughs> I thought about doing an experiment driving down with my van, but I would have had to have a guy holding the thing in the driver's seat to make sure we didn't go over any curvature on the way to Portland. My camera would have ran out of uh, battery life. I wouldn't have been able to, I mean, the storage, it, it wouldn't have worked out. But I remembered I had a flight coming up, uh, going to visit my daughter on her 10th birthday. Hi, honey. Um, and, uh, I took the level with me, and on the flight out to go see her, I had propped the level on the tray table. So I had already done the experiment before I actually filmed it. And I, I was, you should have saw me. I like get the thing sitting on the tray table. And I'm just staring at the bubble for about 10 minutes, like, it's not, it's not moving. <laughs> the guy next to me is like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, no. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm gonna prove that the Earth is flat, man. You know, what I mean, he would have thought I was crazy for sure about it. Came out there, so <laughs> I only um, checked it out for about ten minutes uh, while I was on that flight, and then I uh, get there. We're hanging out that weekend. Uh, went to the birthday party and all that. I was scribbling down my notes uh, for the for the recording and all that, and um, you know, I still had it in the back of my mind the whole time uh, as to how I was gonna present this. So. I, uh, I was like, okay, so I need to, I need to get my hair braided. <laughs> First off, I mean, you gotta be fresh on the screen, right? Anyway, <laughs> it's kind of a social experiment I'm doing here. Um, I'll explain that later, maybe. Um, but uh, got that together, uh, got my notes together as far as explaining the experiment, and uh, you know, the weekend was over, and it was time to get back on the flight, so. You know, I'm, I'm like, how to do this? I set up my computer, record talking here, and do another recording at Savannah, I'm walking through the airport. I'm like, okay, we're about to get on the plane. So I, you know, set up the camera, and you know the rest, probably. Uh, so I posted that video for a small group of people on Facebook, and that was about it. Did not expect anyone to pick that up and put it on any any forums to be looked at. I later realized or found out from a coworker that um, he took my video and put it on a Reddit thread and said, hey guys, what do you think about this? I'm like, Dustin, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I saw it getting more views on, on YouTube because in April I had 27 subscribers. And today is well over 22,000. So that's totally, totally new to me. I'm, I'm the new guy. <laughs> so from there, um, what happened? I, I go to work one day. It was a Friday. Um, and I, I saw that the views on the video went to about 7,500. So I get a, uh, get a comment. To my phone. My phone was vibrating more than it ever has been because, like, nobody knows me, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm getting notifications from YouTube on this video, and I get a, one comment. I pull my phone out, and it's from Mark Sargent. He says, hey, you made the news, man. I'm like, what? Posted a link. I click on the link. It's IFL Science. Flat Earther's experiment goes viral, but not in the way he predicted. I'm like, 7,500 views is not viral. 
who wrote this crap? So, you know, I go through this thing and um, I'm reading the article. Now, uh, we've all experienced being called names, ridiculed and all that, but it's one thing to be called an idiot to your face, but for somebody to write an article, <laughs> totally different. Totally different for somebody to write an article calling you a moron. So they, they took they took screenshots of my Twitter post. They, you know, put my put my name in my face. They used my real name for crying out loud on this thing. I'm like, still wondering if I can sue somewhere or not. Anyway, I'm sure somebody knows some legalese in here. Get with me after this um, thing in the hallway. But um, after that, you know. I start getting all these attacks, you know, people people calling us names, the, the trolls, the people who are still holding on to this globe earth belief, uh, calling me names, just, uh, hey, you're a moron, you don't know about gravity, you don't understand physics, of course it wouldn't have had to dip the nose down. All, all these things that we hear on a regular basis. Gravity! They love that one. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's their favorite, you know, it's like their lord and savior, Gravitron. <laughs> All hail. Anyway, <laughs> so, you know, from, from there, you know, I started making videos to kind of defend myself because I'm like, I'm just a normal guy. I, I got tired of answering the same questions to everybody as we all do. And that's basically all my channel started off as. But after a while, I uh, kind of came to a uh, different conclusion that this this is about more than just defending myself. This is a, a paradigm shift. This is a lot more than just uh, trying to get a one up on anybody as far as what we believe. We're not we're not trying to express any degree of intellectual superiority over anyone so much as just trying to wake people up to the idea or make them aware of the idea that we've been lied to. You know, and it's what you would do with any friend. I mean, if you have a friend and you know that they've been deceived to some degree, you're going to pull them aside and say, hey, man, you, you can't. They, they, she's not right for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't see it. I see it. What I know. is OK, so anyway, um, <laughs> but but you, you want to tell people about this. This is why we go to our close friends and family and try to alert them, make them aware to this thing. And it's successful with some people and other people, not so much. Uh, luckily, um, in my existence, my family, they're cool. You know, they, they get this thing. You know, uh, I, I went home uh, about a month ago. Pops picks me up from the airport. Uh, you know, we, we're just back and forth making small talk. And then there's a little quiet time. He says, you know, it only makes sense that the earth is flat if you think about it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? what I'm talking about. Got pops on board, man. So. <laughs> just, just give it time. Just give it time. We're just, we're just planting seeds, you know. Seeds take, take time to grow. It takes corn like 90 days. So give it a while, right? You know, everybody's not going to flip right off like that. Um, some people are more ready than others, and some people just aren't going to get it. What we're here to do is find the ones who are ready to get this thing, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, as a result of that experiment, um, articles have been written about me uh, in, you know, the UK, Australia, uh, Lebanon, um, Israel, that, lots of different places in the US. And uh, if you Google spirit level guy, <laughs> I'm the spirit level guy. For, for, for all eternity. So, I don't know. Maybe I should have bought some Swanson stock. I don't know. <laughs> Missed out on that one. It's all good, though. But, um, you know, this is this is an opportunity here at the conference to uh, forge some lifelong friendships. Um, because I've met a few people already. i met a lot of great people. This is great. I, I always promote meetups. Uh, it's always uh, great, amazing energy in the room. Um, because what happens is after we come to this reality, this realization that um, the world isn't what we believe it is, we want to tell people around us, we want to tell our friends, families, co-workers, that we find ourselves to be somewhat isolated. And um, we want to talk to people about this thing, but nobody wants to talk to us. And 
you know, getting to these meetups, it gives you an opportunity to talk to people about flat earth as much as you want to talk, they want to talk too. So that's, that's all good. It's a win-win. So while you're here, I encourage you to exchange phone numbers, you know, because that's what phones are for, to talk to people that you want to communicate with. Exchange emails, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, however you communicate, you know, make some friends here. It's, it's going to be good. Uh, this, this whole, we'll call it a weekend. Nobody's going to work tomorrow, are they? All right, let's call it a weekend. Then. It, I'm saying it's just awkward. This Thursday and Friday, make sure, no, this weekend is going to change the world. If you think about it, because uh, what we're doing is actually uh, going contradictory to the mainstream narrative. And uh, there, there was one thing that I uh, wanted to wanted to read. I had actually heard this this morning, and it kind of resonated, and I, I just thought it was cool. So uh, it says, as the war between light and darkness continues, heroes and villains become harder to identify. Kindred spirits separated at birth fighting for their place in time to be solidified. The clock ticks faster and faster while time runs the marathon in this Babylon. But you see, the end is only the beginning, the beginning of the calm before the storm. I thought that was cool. I just want to throw that in there. Um, but but that's, that's what this is, guys. This is a, a paradigm shift. This is um, a, a new way to view reality. What we do from here is move forward uh, however we can, expressing ourselves whatever way that we can. And we all have different strengths. Some of us are extroverts and can, you know, make videos and want to jump in front of the camera and act all crazy and stuff. So some people can do that. Others want to just, uh, you know, get behind the mic, post pictures while they do a voiceover. Other people want to draw and, uh, you know, do, do art. People can do music, however you want to spread the message. If you want to write on the side of your van, <laughs> Earth's surface is 71% water, bodies of water do not curve, therefore the Earth is flat. <laughs> and you want to drive around just uh, kind of red-pilling people in traffic, then do that. It's a great conversation starter, I can tell you. I get people walking up to my van, taking pictures all the time. I'm like, is that even legal? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, that happens. I mean, so I'm, I'm excited about this thing. I'm, I'm always willing to uh, spread the message about this thing. And I, I believe that we all are, too. Um, I don't believe there are any closet flat earthers here. And if there are, get out of the closet. We need you. Because what we're doing here, uh, this is this is um, this is somewhat of a battle, uh, more or less between good and evil. No, more or less. This is a battle between good and evil. Okay, because what we what we do at this point, we're um, spreading information, uh, opening people's minds to a concept that brings them to the conclusion that this place was created. Uh, this place was fashioned by a divine creator. <laughs> and and that when we come to that conclusion, well, you have to look at the other side. Well, who would want to hide that fact? The bad guy, obviously. I'm, I'm a simple guy. I'm, I'm the common sense guy. That's what I do. So, it, I mean, looking at it like that, you know, this this is what we what you've been waiting for. We I find when I talk to people that. We all have this similar story like we never really fit in, weren't really always the most popular, outspoken people, didn't. We could sit in a room with people while they're talking about things that have zero relevance to, to what we're talking about and uh, won't, won't so much get into it. I mean, I was just the same way. I go to work Monday morning around this time of year and Everybody's talking about their football games and this guy scored this much and there was an epic fourth quarter. And did you see that play? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of on some other stuff, man. That's, uh, 
Jeez, uh, gee, you know, get excited about a bunch of men in tights. That's I don't roll that way, bro. <laughs> so, no, I mean, just, um, you know, mainstream reality keeps us so, uh, so distracted with things uh, of no real importance. I mean, you know, and I used to ask people from time to time and guys would get upset about this. I'm like, so I don't get this. So what, what you do, you buy these jerseys, you paint your face, you go to these games, you're a season ticket holder. So. Showing all this team spirit, making sure that you get to all these games, you've even written things on your car, you have all these stickers. So at the end of the year, when your team wins, what do you get? <laughs> They're like, the excitement, you get bragging rights. But you didn't do anything. <laughs> you don't get bragging rights for being a fan? Anyway, I'll move off of that one before I... Somebody, somebody's probably like, screw you, D. <laughs> I love my team, man. <laughs> my cousin plays for them. Anyway, <laughs> it's all good. But, you know, I mean, it, it's it's these things. Go Saints. Cut that out, Candy. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it's just um, – Things that that you know have no true value in life. Let let's put our focus where where it's gonna matter later. Things that you know are gonna carry over, and uh, maybe make an impact in the world. Like um, you know, showing people that things aren't quite what we've been told. Crying out loud, um, people in this reality, in this society that is, have been so detached from reality that they'll argue this concept and tell you that. Yeah, the, yeah, of course. I've seen the curve. I'm like, no, those are implanted memories. <laughs> I've looked out of the plane. I saw it. No, you haven't. Here, here's this video I made. I even, I filmed the whole thing. See any curvature? Well, you're not high enough. There's not enough weed in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> to get high enough to see the curve, okay? You'll start thinking you're spinning. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know still i mean j just those things it's like um our senses don't tell us anything about their being encouraged our eyes don't see the sun as being 93 million miles away when i put my feet on the ground i don't feel any movement but we're speeding at a thousand miles per hour. Oh, the atmosphere. I'm sorry. Here, break this down for me. Um, other than the earth, can you give me an example of a enclosed system existing next to a vacuum without a physical barrier? That fries their brain cells, I'm telling you. They short circuit when you ask them that question. Um, yeah. Gravity. With, with two Bs. <laughs> so, you know, just, just things like that. Our, our senses don't pick up on these things. So, you know, it, I, I take a really common sense approach to this whole situation. You know, I, I, when I'm when I'm explaining this thing, it's, it's just water, water, you know, every everywhere you see it, the surface lays flat. You grab a bottle of water, drink half of it. You look at the surface. Come on, man. And you, you run your bath water, let it sit for a little bit. You're going to see this flat across the whole thing, man. Go to the pool before you jump in the pool. Um, you know, growing up, I used to go fishing with my dad all the time. You know, he would wake us up really early in the morning, about five uh, before the fish start jumping so we could go fishing and all that because he worked at a place that was connected to the Arkansas River. And uh, we would go there with him, go uh, go to the bait shop, pick up some worms, grab some snacks, A&W root beer. It was delicious. Barks? Are you kidding me? A and W, baby. Anyway, um, <laughs> so you know, and then we would get out to the water. But I remember uh, getting out and looking across the lake, and it's early in the morning before anything's going on, and the lake's just calm. From one side to the other, it looks like glass. And as soon as I heard about flat Earth, that's what snapped it into place with me. Remembering those memories, going fishing with my dad, because you know, I'm like water doesn't curve you're, you so you're telling me old joe bag of donuts globe head what you're telling me is 
that water lays flat everywhere except for the oceans. Well, yeah, gravity, because gravity effect. I'm like, all right, dude. So, you know, moving on from there, um, guys, just continue doing the best that you can to spread the message as far as this thing goes, because uh, the way I see it, um, in the next five years, this thing's going to be common knowledge. And uh, I believe that we're right here. We're, we're going to affect change in the world and we're, we're going to do the best that we can to probably shorten that period of time because this is exponential. Uh, when people get discouraged as far as talking about this, I, I like to say, well, well, think about this, you know, um, after you talk about flat earth and, you know, have have people in the mainstream talk about this, they say, you know, this person is going to make flat earth look crazy. I'm like, well, even if they are, think about this. One, one of two things is going one of three things is going to happen. One, somebody's going to hear about flat earth that's already a believer in the globe and they're going to continue being a believer in the globe. Two, they're going to look into it and then go back to believing in the globe. Or three, they're going to really look into it with an open heart and they're going to become a flat earther. So our numbers only grow. Our, our numbers only grow. We only increase. So we're going to get to a point where there's going to be a, a degree of saturation. There's going to be a tipping point where, where consciousness on Earth, on this flat plane, goes from believing that we're on a spinning ball to knowing that the Earth is flat and that we've been lied to. And that's when the change can begin. And right now, as far as any, any infighting, any bickering that may occur, that's, that's irrelevant. It, it's, it's, it's so minute, so unimportant that, that we shouldn't even really waste our time with it, myself included, although recently, anyway. <laughs> I'll try to keep the shades off in the next few videos. You know, you know I go into fight, guy, fight mode when I do that. Anyway, um, but what, what's going to happen is uh, we understand that this is a way to move forward in the future to make things better. This is a struggle between good and evil. We are on the side of light. You are the soldiers of truth. You are the warriors of the light versus the darkness. So appreciate yourselves for having the courage. For having the courage to do what you do uh, concerning spreading this truth because this is the most important thing that we can do because this is the very foundation. This is the basis of our reality. Everything that we know about reality is based on this, this one thing. And once we figure this out, once we get the world to figure this out, things are going to change for the better because things have been suppressed that will, will make things, you know, take things to a more positive direction. So this is for future generations. There is, in my opinion, no more worthy cause than to spread the truth about this whole flat earth reality, okay? Um, I'm just glad to be counted amongst the uh, great people here um, to be a voice in this movement. And uh, I, I want you to be encouraged to know that your voice counts also. Whether you're a speaker, whether you're on stage, whether you're a content creator or not, there are people that you're going to reach that I can't. There are going to be people that you're going to reach that Mark Sargent can't get to or anybody else in here. So your circle of influence is important. And uh, again, I encourage you from here to meet some new people, shake some hands, exchange some cards if you have them, uh, exchange information and make some friends out of here because it's it's necessary to encourage yourself because we get so much negative pushback from the outside world who still believes that mainstream narrative that we live on a spinning ball flying through infinite space and explosions can come out of nothing and people can evolve from monkeys <laughs> so uh, but but there are still monkeys oddly enough however that goes you know they say that we came from that at some point fish just crawled out of the primordial ooze and evolved into this or that. I'm like, that's weird because every time I pulled a fish out of water, its evolutionary process ended almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But I uh, just want to thank everybody for coming out. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad I made it. And, uh, you know, be encouraged. Um, you know, uh, uh, have fun. Have fun. Take this in. Take selfies. Take lots of pictures with people. Hey, catch me in the hallway. Let's take some pictures. Give me a big hug. I don't mind. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, hey, it's me and you right after this. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's all good. But knowing that these these individuals are here and that we're all on the same page, uh, we as a flat earth family um, give each other the strength and vitality uh, fortitude of character to live fearlessly. And that's what this is all about. So from here, go ahead with this truth and uh, do the best that you can. Uh, I'm Daryl. I'm your friend. Uh, this is the Flat Earth Offensive, and you are the resistance. <laughs> Great job, brother. Okay, job. D. Marvel, Daryl Marvel, hey Daryl, I gotta ask, when you went on the plane and you're doing the test, were you nervous about doing it at all? <laughs> the two ladies actually were asleep, okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> Well, I can tell you this, doing the tests alone is, is very important. And there are so many easy tests to do, just little ones that, that'll blow your mind. Like, wait a second, the moon puts off a cold light? What? What? I actually had this happen. Let me share this real quick. I had this happen to me, um, it was a little over a year ago. And uh, a group of guys were together, we were playing cornhole. I'm from Indiana, you kind of have to play cornhole in the winter. It's a sanity thing. So one of the guys showed up. He came into the barn. He's like, oh, Homer, yeah. Where's your aluminum foil hat, man? I said, dude, that's how stupid you are, man. It's tin foil. It's tin foil. He's like, well, okay. You got me on that one. But it's still pretty stupid what you say. Okay. Do you have any beers? <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to need one. Because I'm going to blow your mind right now. Grab your little infrared thermometer over there on your daddy's workbench. And let's go outside and look at the moon. On the snow. And let's test a shadow. And then I'm going to show you something in Genesis. What? Yeah, I'm going to show you something in Genesis, and I'm going to prove to you that the moon is a lesser light. It's the negative light. And the Bible is true. It's very true. So if you could have been there with me when he saw the numbers come back from the shadow to the moonlight on the same snow in 22 degree temperature. Yeah. The guy actually never said anything to me again about foil. <laughs> so it just takes that one person. So from a guy that was giving me a hard time for the last 10 years on different conspiracies or whatever, trying to wake people up, it's the experimentation. What Daryl did on the plane, what Rob and I did on Lake Michigan, which was a blast by the way. That was a good time. I actually had more fun doing that than chasing balloons, but that's a whole other story. But I will say this, it's, it's the getting out there and not being afraid, telling the truth. And no matter what happens, you're gonna have somebody say something to you. Gotcha. You're gonna have, you're gonna have something and somebody trying to resist everything that you do, no matter what, you're never gonna have the number a uh, hundred percent on your fan club. And that's one thing I will tell you guys. Most of you don't know. I used to do radio for a living and television. I still do a little TV thing for our PBS affiliate, trying to help out mom and pop businesses. But even today, and it just happened. 
And I had no idea. But for some of us that have been, you know, coming into this community, it's kind of like just having fun. So yesterday we were taking pictures doing this. Guess what I just found out? The Freemasons own this one too. No idea. But I've already been accused. The, 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 whole, the, the whole thing is I've already been accused of being a shill. You do green screen stuff. Oh my gosh, Rob Skiba. Oh my gosh, you know Mark Sargent. You know this guy. You know that guy. No, I'm in the company of some really damn good people. That's the thing. And I got another one coming up. Uh, and a guy that uh, just in the last year I've been able to actually have some great conversations with and now a part of a group with, uh, as well as Bob Nodell and some other fine folks that are here. But I will tell you this. We're going to take a quick break. You guys can get up, stretch your legs around, and walk around, grab something to drink, coffee, lemonade, water. But I just want to say thanks again for being here. And coming up next, we're going to have uh, Jaron from Jaronism. Yep. And I can only tease that we've got some stuff coming up that we'll announce tomorrow. There's a big announcement coming up tomorrow. And we'll be, I'll be bringing some people up here. But I, I can't say a whole lot. I just got to say, well, we're going to tease you. But when we're talking about doing experiments and talking about coming together and bringing the minds together and talking and bringing this stuff up, we have a major announcement coming up tomorrow. And I'll leave it at that. And it's an international deal. So... All right. Thanks for being here. Love you guys. There you go. 10 minutes. About 10 minutes, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.